Hi there, my friend and friends. Particle animations can be pretty awesome, right? They can be used for big in-your-face effects, small little micro interactions, and everything in between. Often we rely on JavaScript to be able to do these particle effects and animations, and often even then we're using a third-party tool just to make our life a little bit easier. But you can make really awesome 3D particle animations with just CSS like my friend Emmett Sheen did with this firework animation that we can see right here. And not only does it look really good, you can use a lot of techniques to also make it performant as well. Now if you know me, you know I'm sort of decent at writing CSS. CSS, but animations are definitely not my strong point, but luckily Amit was kind enough to come and join me to discuss how we could do some particle animations. We're going to be doing it this time by looking at this cool laser effect where we're going to have a 3D space and cuts through the surface of something that's then going to fall away and the whole time that's happening we have these like flamey sparks shooting off of it. And during all of this not only do we learn the cool stuff that's involved in all of that, but Amit shares some really good just general animation tips and tricks and there's just so many great takeaways that Amit shared while he taught me how to do this. And so we're going to kick things off with Amit explaining how he got the inspiration for even thinking about doing stuff like this and then diving right into how we can get started with it. So this whole idea started like a couple of weeks ago. I talked to a guy that asked me the question that you probably know better than me. How do I improve myself in CSS? How do I get better? Uh, and one of the things I suggested was let's do a, uh, the challenges like, uh, like I code this or like the code pen challenge. Uh, and, and we talk about the cold pen challenge and this month's cold pen challenge is about particles. And he said, well, you can't do particle animations in, in, uh, in CSS. And I said, well, of course you can. Uh, and, and that day I did like this animation of, uh, of fireworks because that week was the, the fireworks theme. Um, and yeah, you can absolutely do a, a, a particles animations uh, with CSS. And that is what we're going to do uh, today. And we're going to look at a lot of nice things like syncing animations and because the, the whole idea of particle is working with a large number of elements uh we're going to look at a, a nice little uh, uh, uh sas loop and we're going to even add a, a little spice with uh with some random and we're going to look at some uh random things uh yeah so let's dive in do you want to just go over the 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 css that we have right now on the body yeah so we have a background color the height so we're just you know, the min height with the grid place items is going to keep everything we do in the center of the screen. Uh, overflow. Then, so, so now the, the scene is just like an invisible dot in the center of the screen. Uh, and what we, the, the other thing that we have is obviously perspective because we're going to use uh, 3D. So we need a, a perspective. And because we want this perspective, the, the body is the, like the perspective container, but we want the perspective to be on all of the children and the descendants of the children. So we're going to give this everything that is not empty a uh, transform style of preserved 3D. So it would preserve the, uh, the vanishing point of the photo. Um, yeah, and that's it. And this is the scene is in position relative. And uh, the animation that we're gonna do today, uh, because we thought about what would be cool to do with uh, particles, and what is always cool, lasers. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So we're gonna do like a laser, a simple laser that is uh, 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 like cutting something and, and where, where it cut. Uh, so we're gonna see a lot of sparks and that's those spark would, uh, would be uh, made out of particles, obviously. Awesome. So uh, let's start with the, with the HTML and we're gonna add like uh, two basic uh, elements. First, let's add the laser, the, the laser that's gonna uh, cut. And we're gonna add like a panel or a div or something, just something for the laser to cut. Uh, let's give it a class of, uh, uh, yeah, you can panel, it's okay. Uh, yeah, that's it for now. Um, we, we, we're gonna do four things, the, the laser, the panel, the sparks, obviously that's gonna be the main part. And then we're gonna add like a falling part after the laser cut the panel, we're gonna add something that falls. Um, yeah, so let's go to the CSS. Do you want me to do it, by the way? If you're sick of uh, writing code, just tell me and I'm... <laughs> okay, over. sounds good. Uh, if if yeah, I'm but, struggling but... at all, feel free to like fix any of my mistakes and stuff too. <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, let's add by a simple uh, class. We're going to start with a laser, okay? Uh, we're going to say uh, laser. And by the way, do you know what the, the initials of laser is? No, I know it stands for something and I never remember what it is. <laughs> It's just, it's a nice little, like a trivia question that uh, like on, on pub quizzes. It's light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Uh, so we're going to give it a position of absolute. 
uh, because we want to position it absolute according to the, the father. And it's it's going to be a laser, so it's going to be like a thin, long line. Mm -hmm. And we can give it a width and a height, or we can use, or we can use an inset. Um, right. Yeah, so uh, if you give an inset uh, with a negative value, like, for example, if you give, like, minus 10 pixels, so we're going to have, if you give it, like, a background color white, for example. So now we can see that we have, like, a... a uh, square, mm -hmm. yeah, of uh, yeah, of a twenty pixel by twenty pixel because it moves uh, uh ten pixels right. to each direction. Oh, okay, okay, and, yeah, yeah. So yeah, because but, because the parent is basically a zero by zero in the middle, we're pulling it outwards. So exactly. The, the, I, I, as I said, the, the the scene is is like an invisible point in the mm -hmm. center of the screen, and the laser is inset minus ten pixels in either direction. So it's a nice way to, to center uh, things if you want them to be square or round or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you want them to be long, so we can add into the inset two values. Uh, so let's add to the first value. We want to make it long, so let's make it like 50 VVH. Uh, we can even make it more, but yeah. And uh, when it's uh, thin, so let's make it like one pixel. Mm, I don't, oh, this needs to be negative, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I, oh, I, I, yeah. It's it's a, it's a, it's a it's a very common mistake. Um. Yeah. So. Uh. But laser. Uh. Let Let's paint the background color red. Uh. Because you know it's a laser. Mm -hmm. Um. But a laser also have it's a light. So we're gonna use uh like like create like a neon light mm -hmm. and the, the the trick to create those lights are actually by uh, layering uh box shadows. So you can create just a regular box shadow of uh, like, like zero, zero, and let's say five pixels of red. And then, uh, yeah, and then you can actually, yeah, just copy it and then, exactly. Uh, and, and as for the values, uh, I normally do something like some sort of... Uh, uh, like it, it, like not not a, not a uh, complete series, but not like if it's five, ten, so it's fifteen, twenty five, forty, and so on. Because it's one add right. the the, mm -hmm. the last one. Uh yes, yeah, so we we can add one uh, at forty. Um. And the the maybe the color itself in the middle, not like red, make it like a light red or, or a coral or something like that. No, no, the the, the color of the, the background itself. Oh right, right, right. Uh coral. Nice. Uh so this is our laser, but this laser needs to cut something. So let's uh, create another class. We're gonna call it uh, um uh, how do you call it? Panel? I did panel yeah. there, yeah. Panel? Like, yeah. Panel. And that panel also gonna have position absolute. Uh, now that panel is gonna be uh, let, let's let's do let's give it a, a width of uh, a width and a height, but I want to be very very uh, very wide because I want to be out of the screen. So let's say for example like a hundred vh, the width and the height. Let's say hundred and twenty pixels. And the reason I chosen hundred and twenty pixels because later I'm gonna give uh, each one of those pixels a different. Uh, different elements, so I don't want it to be too wide. I don't want it to be too narrow. 120 pixels, 100. And you can we can go 140, 160. Uh, but this is sounds like a good uh, good measurement. Uh, yeah, so we can already see it, okay. But we do need to move it a bit. Mm -hmm. First of all, we need to move it to the left. We need to move it up so it would be in the center of the screen, okay. Uh, we can do it by just modifying the top and left of the of the panel. So the top, let's say, uh, Sorry. Yeah, so the, the top needs to be minus 60 because it's half mm -hmm. of the minus uh, 20 of the 120 pixels. Mm -hmm. And the left, let's say, uh, minus 120 pixels. So the, the piece that is out, that is left of the of the laser, the piece that is getting cut off is, is a square. Right. Yep. Perfect. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but now. This is right now it's parallel to the screen, parallel to the laser. We need to rotate it, mm -hmm. okay, 90 degrees. So let's add uh, rotate, and we're going to need use an individual transform uh, that is rotate mm -hmm. 90 degrees uh, on the x axis. So, uh, uh, no, so you need to no. add the word, the, the letter x before rotate x. No, 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 Oops. here x 90 degrees. I always forget how to do it with the single ones. <laughs> Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Um, so, so now actually we don't see the panel because the reason we don't see it is because it's completely flat. It has no depth, so it's uh, it's 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 uh, height is zero. So we can rotate it a bit less than ninety, but instead we're gonna leave it ninety. Uh, what we're gonna do is actually gonna rotate the scene. Uh, I'm wrapping everything in a scene because this scene is like a camera. Mm -hmm. So imagine that this uh, uh, this side is, is is the panel and this side is the camera and we want to move the camera up. But in CSS we can't move the camera up. What we can do is actually rotate this the scene down. So we're going, going to give the scene a transform, uh, and we're not going to uh, not going to use the rotate uh, uh, the individual transform here because we're going to give it a rotate x of uh, minus 30 degrees, for example, but I also want to rotate it on the Y axis a bit. Mm. So we're going to give it a rotate Y. And if you want to give uh, two rotation, like on two axes, uh, so doing it in the individual transform is, you need to use a, a th uh, uh, vectors because you use like a translate, a rotate 3D mm -hmm. uh, parallel. So it's much less readable. So whenever I need to rotate something on two axes, I'm still using transform. Uh, so would you just... would you do rotate x and y, or would you just do it yeah. all within a rotate and put both values? No, you would do the, the two. No, no, yeah. 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 Just if to make you, it more readable. Put, yeah, if you don't put the rotate uh, without the x and y, so it's actually oh right, then it goes yes, yeah. It's rotate. It's not yeah. parallel. It's not like uh, translate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so let's do uh, like 30 pixels, uh, 30 degrees, excuse me. Uh, yeah, so now we can see the panel. Uh, okay, so two things. Uh, we can see, we can actually see the, the right end of the panel. So let's make the panel a bit longer, uh, yeah. like, uh, I don't know, 200 VH or something. Uh, and the laser, good. yeah. And the laser, because it's uh, we can see its end, so I'm going to change it to like 100 VH. Just, just, just to, so we won't see the, the end. Okay, mm -hmm. that's let's start moving things. Nice. And the, the first thing that we need to move is the laser. Uh, so let's give it an animation. Um, no, no, no. Oh. oh, oh, I was gonna make some keyframes, but go for it. I'll let you do this part because you'll be okay. So let, let's start with a, with a simple animation. Uh, let's call it laser because it's uh. Laser, uh, and we're gonna the, we're gonna add a variable, and we're gonna add a, like a constant variable. So we're gonna use a sass variable of a duration. Uh, so we obviously need to add this variable like up here. Uh, let's say ten second. Oops. So later we can change it, and everything is gonna change accordingly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, but right now the duration is ten seconds. And obviously, I want it to be infinite because I want it to loop over and over again. And I'm, I want the movement to be linear because it's you know it's like a laser. So let's make the the movement linear. Okay. Uh, so now, yes, we can actually go and create the keyframes. Uh, I like to create the keyframe things uh, right here. But do you want to create them outside? It's well, I, I guess it just. Um... Because we're using SAS, we can nest it in. But uh, the one thing I will ask is just if somebody, I know we're going to use some SAS for for some loops and other stuff later on, but is there an advantage to using um, a SAS variable here instead of using a custom property? Yes, uh, because later on uh, when we use, uh, we're going to use a loop, a SAS loop, and we're going to use yes. some uh, mathematical calculation inside of that SAS loop. Mm -hmm. And doing that calculation is going to be much easier with uh, uh, with a SAS variable. Perfect. Sounds that's good. just, that's the only reason. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's start. We're going to give do a few things um, uh, for the for the laser. And we we want the laser to start at one end and move to the other end of the, of the panel, obviously. So it's it's actually moving on the Z axis. Mm -hmm. uh, and we actually, we, we, so let's start with the movement, okay? Uh, but we want to do two things because we, we don't want the, the movement back. So I want like the opacity to change the opacity in the beginning. Uh, so let's actually start with the opacity. So the opacity is zero and let's say that in 10%, the opacity is gonna be one. Okay, but the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, translate it. Um, um, should I use the transform or, or the transition? 
it's up to you. Uh, I, I, I've started doing just you exactly, yeah. I asked you the transition, but as I said, I'm, I'm doing a transition on the Z axis. Mm -hmm. So the Z axis is the, the, third, uh, the, the third value. So it's X zero, Y zero, and the Z, we're going to start at minus, let's say, 120 pixels. Oh, tr translate. Uh, translate. <sighs> yeah. Oh, my that's, God. That's okay. I was staring at it going, wait, why isn't it? There we go. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. So now, now it's here, and, and we can see the start. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, uh, I, I want the movement to be 60% uh, of the time. Okay, uh, the reason I'm, I'm selecting 60% is because 60% is divided by four nicely. Uh, we're going to talk about the, the, the math a bit later. So 60 plus 10 is 70%. So at 70%, uh, at it's going to be at plus 120 pixels. So it's okay. Reach the other side. Yes. Yep. There we go. And it goes all the way through. All nice. the way through. Um, and at 80. I'm going to just add the opacity to zero and I'm going to leave it the same all the way to 100 pixels. Okay, so now what we have at the laser, it's, it starts at zero. Uh, it, it stays there for, for, 10, for, 10, uh, for one second, for 10%, so it's one second, uh, while, it's, uh, the, while the opacity is moving to one. And then it taking six seconds, 60%, six seconds to go to the other side. It, the, the travel distance, the total travel distance is 240 pixels, right? Because it's from minus 120 to top 120. And then that it's, it's just fading out. Um, but we do need to know the exact moment to sync up the, all the other animation, the exact moment when it the when the laser touch the panel and the exact moment that it leaves the panel. That's why right. I used 60% because uh, uh, the, the laser touched the panels after 60 pixels. So it's a quarter of, of the time. A quarter of the time is 15%. Uh, so we know that it's going to hit the panel in 25%. Okay. So we're going to use it. And we're actually going to add another animation right here on the laser because I want the laser, when it hits the panel, I want to remove the bottom part. Okay, right. Like, yes, we don't. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, we don't want the bottom part when it's uh, removed. Um, so uh, we can do it in, in many ways, like in trace and move it, but I'm actually going to just use scale to scale it up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's add another animation here. Uh, let's add laser scale I'm gonna have exactly the same uh, duration uh, oops infinite and I'm actually going to leave the timing function the linear is the timing function mm -hmm. I'm going to leave the timing function uh, blank for now uh, just we'll go to the keyframes and the keyframes for the you're following me um, so in, in zero percent obviously the scale needs to be uh, one. Mm -hmm. But we said that the we said that the laser hits the the panel at twenty five percent, right? Mm -hmm. So at twenty five percent, the scales need need to be zero, okay? But I don't want the movement to be. We can. Why why is it uh, saying that I have a mistake here? Undefined. Oops. Duration. Okay, so now, we, we but we can actually see the movement. Oh, so we can we need to do two things. First of all, we need to add the transform origin to the top because the transform origin is in yes. the top. Yeah. Uh, but the second thing we can see that the movement uh, is is what? Why is it moved? Oh, I, I did it to zero. It's need to be zero point five. Yeah. Uh, but but we can actually see the movement, and I don't want I don't want to see the movement. I want it to jump. I want it to yeah. to be instantly. And in order to make it instantly, I'm going to add a, a, a timing function of step end. So now uh, you can see it's going to be full up until 25%, then it's moving uh, in the same, uh, like instantly uh, to, uh, to the half next. of the, uh, yeah. And we're going to leave it there for 55% because it's there all the way to the end. And in 60, it's back to one but i want but i want the movement from 55 to 60 to actually gonna to, to i want to see the movement i don't want it to be instantly right. so how do i change the timing function in the middle of animation 
we actually we can, can you add, add that? an animation timing function here and add like an ease in out. We can see the laser starts at the beginning and it instantly uh, jumps to half of the size. And and when it goes down, nice. it moves. I so never just, knew that you could change the timing function within its you own You knew animation. because we did it in the last video. Did we? We did. I don't remember yeah. that. <laughs> but here's the thing. Everybody forget that you can actually animate the timing function. Uh, we're going to do it again later on. Awesome. Uh, it's, it's, it's fun and you can absolutely do it. Uh, and, and if you're working with animations, yeah, you, you, you sometimes you just need to animate the timing function. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we have the laser. Um, I think that it's okay. Let's go to the main part. Let's go to the sparks. Nice. Uh, so let's go to the back to the HTML. Mm -hmm. And in the HTML, I'm going to add a sparks div. And in the sparks div, as I said, the, the, the reason people saying that it's hard to do uh, particle animations with CSS, because the, the concept of particle animation is using particles, a lot of element, and doing it with CSS, meaning that you need a lot of elements. So the performance is might be problematic. Uh, but in these types of animations, because we're only using transform, only using uh, uh, opacity, and we're only using 100 and 120 uh, elements, it's going to look pretty OK in most phones, uh, I think. Uh, so we're going to add uh, like 120 elements here, because we have 120 pixels. I want a spark for each pixel that it goes to. Yep. Uh, let's have it, uh, it, you can do it like a div or anything, but let's make a, an I, and uh, as I said, 120. So now we have 120 sparks, right? Yep, perfect. Yep, perfect. And that's it, let's go to the CSS. So, sparks, uh, no, no. Again, obviously it's gonna be a position absolute, so now the spark is just like a little dot uh, in the in the middle of the of the panel, right? Mm -hmm. And all the eyes inside of them is going to be obviously position absolute, according to them. Okay. We're going to use the same inset trick. Let's say a minus fifteen, or let's say sixteen pixels. I don't know something like that. Well, we can we can play around with the size later on. And just so we can see it, let's make it a border color of red. Okay. Uh, yeah, so yep. we can actually see it, okay? But what we see is 120 squares all uh, all together. We actually need to separate them. For each one of the pixels, I need I want a different uh, a different eye, a different uh, spark. Right. So how are we going to do it? We're going to use a SAS loop, and SAS loops are for people that didn't that don't work with loops. It it looks a bit scary, mm -hmm. but once you get them, it's like it's really really fun. It's really giving you a lot of power to do a lot of great things. And when we you're working with uh, 120 uh, elements, you can by the way uh, say uh, and nth child uh, one and then two, three, four, five. And, you know, sometimes if I have three, four elements, yeah, it's okay. But if you have 120, no, uh, we're gonna do a loop. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so a loop starts with a simple four uh, and, and and you get a variable. So for i, I'm just using variable i because, you know, it's an i. And from the initial number is one, uh, the, Sometimes I'm using zero, but we're going to talk about it later. Uh, one uh, through, uh, uh, we have 120, okay? So uh, if you use one through 120, so it's going to be in included the 120. If you're saying two, uh, uh, so it's not including the 120. So the last is 119. Mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes I'm using uh, zero to 120. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it, it's the same number of, of, uh, of repetition, but then the dollar I is equals to a different amount every time. So now it's equals to one. If I use zero, it's equal to zero. Yeah. So let's put this nth child inside of the loop. Uh, and we're going to use this dollar I, as I said here. So now it's going to loop 120 times. And every time I'm going to get a different nth child. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna give this nth child a translate 
uh, let's say it easy. That's going to be easier because I want to translate it on a different uh, element. And uh, what I can do is, uh, oops, excuse me. Uh, so I need just the value of I minus 60 pixels. Yep. Okay, because uh, the I want to move, move it back 160. Yeah, okay. So I want the, the, the center one, the, the first one to be minus 60 pixels and then plus one pixels for each one. Yeah. Uh, so let's go and give this value here to this. Uh, I'm going to use a transform because I'm going to do a lot of things to this part. So I'm going to use transform and not individual transform. Right. Yeah. Uh, so let's say uh, translate Z. Uh, var tz and now we have yeah okay. and now we have like a block okay uh but this block actually if if you do like a, a right click and inspect you can actually see that each one of those divs mm -hmm. um i yeah. will i just just to interrupt really quickly just in case people aren't used to seeing um variables used like this just because we're not using them as an actual value like here it's the nth child and then over here it's being used for a custom property uh we have to do interpolation so that's just why we have the dollar sign and then wrapping it the, the um, pound sign the, uh, the pound sign sorry yeah the pound sign followed by the the squiggly braces because if not it just doesn't work and anytime you yeah. use a, a sas variable as a custom property you have to do it there too yeah um in in some cases, like if I would use like in an inset uh, something like that, it would work mm -hmm. theoretically. But in a, if you put it in a in a custom property, you need to wrap it as a uh, like as a string. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now we have like this block. Each one of it is in place. But so now let's let's move it. Let's create the animation. Okay um the animation the animation obviously is going to be spark uh the duration is going to be uh duration i'm going to add a delay but going to talk about a delay in a second uh oops um infinite again i want to move uh to run uh, forever and the, the, here the timing function i'm going to use is out because i want to start it's it's good it's like an explosion it's a spark, spark. So i want to start fast and move and end slow. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's is out. Um, I'm going to use a couple of more things, but we're going to leave it for now. Uh, let's create the keyframes. Things. Okay, so at the beginning, I want the spark to be very small. Mm -hmm. Okay, like uh, I'm going to scale zero, and then uh, while it the explosion is going to be big, so the scale is going to be back at one. Uh, and obviously, I'm going to move it both up and to the sides. And uh, I'm going to move the, the, I'm going to switch the opacity to zero. So what it's like it starts at one, it moves at zero, it explodes, and then it dies out. Okay. Yep. So okay. there's a few things happening uh, in this animation. But in the beginning, uh, obviously, the opacity needs to be one. Uh, the transform. Uh, it's, this is the transform. Update from here. Um, and it's this is uh, also it stays there until the laser hits this specific point, right? So yes. it's hit as we said in the beginning after twenty five percent. Yeah. And then the explosion. Let's say I want the explosion to be like five uh, percent, so it's thirty. Uh, so the difference is between the five and the 30, right? Yeah. So we're gonna move the opacity, as I said, to zero. And we're gonna add, instead of the translate, we're gonna use translate 3D. So now we have zero, oops, zero, zero. Okay. And here we're gonna give them a two values. Let's say, but for now, let's say uh, zero and minus, uh, 50 pixels. We, 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 we're going to change it, but just so we can see something moves. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, if it works, yeah. So we, you, we can see it moves. But they're all moving together. I want, them, I want each of them to move as exactly as the... Oh, yeah, actually, I need oh. to move to add one more thing. Scale. Before, before I'm adding the, the delay, let's add a scale. Uh, let's... 
here it's zero it ends at one okay so uh what i need to add is yeah here it is so yep. now it's nothing and now yeah so like, it starts at zero and then sort of explodes outwards perfect yeah so we can we can see it exactly now yeah mm -hmm. so when it's happening uh, but again, I don't want it to happen all at once. I want it to happen one after the other. So what I would need to, to add is right here on the animation, I'm going to add a delay. And the reason here I'm not using a, uh, I'm using a custom property and not a set variable, it's because it's a custom property. Each one of the of the element is going to get a different value of delay. Yep. I'm actually going to set this delay right here in this, uh, uh, in this uh, loop. Mm -hmm. Right, so how much delay each one of those uh, animations needs needs to get? So the total animation right now is ten seconds, but the total movement is only six seconds, right? Mm -hmm. But it, it it starts at uh, 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 sixty pixels before and ends sixty pixels after, so it actually touches just the the, the panel for three seconds, right? Right. Yeah. Right. So it's actually, we can actually say it's like a duration times 0 0.3. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. So for each one of them, so it's divided by 120. Right? Because we have 120 uh, pixels Different. inside. Yes, of yes. Exactly. That pixels. makes sense. Yep. Yeah. So all we need to do now is just give them, a, a, a multiply each one for a dollar i, and, uh, and that's it. Uh, we're gonna add, yeah. Okay, so we can actually see the laser. We can see something happening now. But in order to avoid this, the the beginning, we need to add here in the animation. Uh, we're gonna add backwards. So now, uh, before the animation starts, I'm gonna have this. Uh, uh, I'm gonna have this style. Okay. Um. So. We can actually see now that the laser is like working and whenever it touches the panel, there is something happening, but it's not really nice. We need to add a little spice and the spice that I like to use is randomize. And we're gonna use, you can use randomize in so many uh, uh, ways, uh, but we're gonna use them like in the basic way. We're gonna randomize the X, uh, 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 like the X amount, we're gonna randomize the Y and we're gonna randomize the color. Uh, and I'm maybe going to randomize the angle. We can do whatever we want. Um, so in order to do it, uh, let's have a variable, let's say, wrote, uh, uh, translate x. So this is like I want to uh, translate on the x-axis. Mm -hmm. And I'm just using a random. And random is a SAS function that gets some sort of value. So let's say 100 and pick 120. So now I have a random number between zero and 120 mm -hmm. okay but because i want it to be like from uh, the translate it can be minus or plus so i can say minus 60. right so yep. for now uh so, so now i get like a random number from minus 60 to 60. okay and if i if i'll take this uh variable and i'm going to change this oops i'm i'm, I'm completely at the wrong place. Um, I'm going to use it here, tx. So now we can see in the animation uh, that the, the sparks, yeah, now it's starting looking like sparks. Uh, we obviously need to do the same thing for the ty, uh, and we're going to replace the minus from uh, var uh, ty. But the ty, none, it, it, you can't, it, it, it has to be always negative and actually be always like a big negative, like more than 60. So let's say minus 180. Right. So now I have a number between minus 60 and minus 180. Okay. No, I forgot to use this one. Sorry. Yeah, the final live coding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there yeah, we okay. go. Yeah, well, yeah, here we go. It looks a bit more, a bit nicer. Uh, and and as for the color, we really need to change the color because sparks is, are a bit more yellowish than reddish. Uh, so let's uh, have a random on the, on the hue. Uh, and the hue is, is a number, so we can have again a random of. Uh, oops. Oh. Thank you. No <laughs> uh, let's say random of uh, um, forty. 
uh, so the the heel wheel starts at red, so zero mm -hmm. it's red, and as you go up, it goes more to the to the yellowish part. Mm -hmm. uh, but and if you go backwards, you go a bit more to the purplish part. Mm -hmm. So we actually let's make it fifty and make it minus ten. So it's going to get a bit purplish to the yellow, uh, and we need to use this heel and where we can use it right here in the background color. Uh, it's in in the eye, yeah. Uh, oops. We can actually use an HSL, and I know HSL now it's not the the best thing. It's it, it's cool, but we have all those new things. But I'm just so used to working oh. with HSL in those things, yeah. and when you just need to set the hue, it's just uh just more comfortable. Um, so yeah. let's. See. I've been playing uh, around with with um, LCH, and I'm just like my brain is so in HSL mode that this is not working for me yet. I need to. I need more practice. <laughs> Yeah, I'm at the same place. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, you used to work with it. Um, <clears throat> just like, you know, in the old days, it was RGB, and now it's HSL. Yep. It's going to be, yeah. Uh, so I, I added the saturation to 100% because I wanted to be really saturated and the lightness to 50%. So now if you get something like this, and it doesn't work because I didn't add the pixel. Um, is it working, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it kind of look better. Um, we can add a uh, rotation, uh, 3D rot or, or let's say let's like a two uh, two D rotation. Um, let's edit on here. Let's have a rotate X, uh, RX, and rotate Y, R R Y. Okay, so I actually created, uh, I need to create those two uh, variables. Uh, oops, or X. So let's do random uh, 720 minus 360. So it's uh, from minus 360 to plus 360, right? Mm -hmm. So it's X and Y. And if we have it working, what have I missed again? And I'm sorry for this uh, thing. Uh, I accidentally wrote uh, pixels instead of degrees right here. So and it, it yeah, so uh, yeah, it, my mistake, my bad. But now it's working. Uh, and I actually added like a, a rotation both on the x-axis and on the y-axis just to add a bit more uh, variation. And you can actually see it uh, now. And the sparks looks good. Uh, anything else you want to add to these sparks? By the way. I don't know. I, it looks pretty good to me. Uh, okay. if there's a, yeah, if there's something you have in mind, go for it. But I'm happy. Well, with the, the the thing that I have in mind is okay. Now we have a laser that is cutting, but nothing is happening. We need uh, something that falls down uh, to make this animation complete. And the first thing that we actually need to do is to move the panel. So the, the second the panel, uh, the laser gets off the panel. We're gonna move the panel aside and create a different part. In, in its place and that part is going to fall down okay? okay i hope it's going to make sense it's going to make sense more once we're going to do it uh so i'm going to get back to the panel uh uh, uh <clears throat> the panel class up yes. there and i'm going to add uh an animation uh again i'm going to use here i'm going to animate the the timing function in the middle um let's create an oops I'm not in the right in the right window yeah okay uh, let's create an animation. Um, you, you, if you want to write, you can do it, by the way. <laughs> uh, duration, it's going to have an infinite, obviously. And here, uh, so at the beginning, I want the panel to move in, okay, mm -hmm. before the laser cuts it. And then the laser is going to cut it, and then it's going to jump back to the to, to its place. So, uh, but, but in the beginning, I want it to move slightly, uh, so smoothly, so I'm going to add an ease in out, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, and we're going to add here in the keyframes key of funnel. funnel. Um, so in the in the in the zero percent, like right in the beginning, as I said, I want it to be in the like to move to the right. Mm -hmm. So because I want it to move to the right, I'm going to add uh, here a translate. Another transition, uh, translate of 120 pixels, right? We said the, the, the part that the, the laser is cut is a square, so 120 pixels, 120 pixels. Yep. So we can actually see now it's moves, it's uh, it's in the end, but I want it to be in, uh, in let's say, uh, 
in 10%, when the layer starts moving, I want it to be at zero. Okay? So now it moves back, mm -hmm. and now the laser starts to cut it. And now at exactly when the laser leaves it at 55%, I want it to be back here at 50, at uh, 120 pixels, and I want it to remain there. Okay? But again, I want the movement to be instantly. How do I make the movement instant instantly? I'm animating the timing function to step end. Oops. So now it slides. It slides and then jumps. It's cut. Yeah. And now you can see. Tick. Nice. Yeah. Okay. But uh, so the last part is just to add something. Once you, you once the, the panel moves, I'm going to add like a different piece instead of it, and I'm going to animate this piece to to fall down. So let's add the last thing we're going to add to our uh, HTML uh, right here down. We're going to add uh, a drop element. It's mm -hmm. going to drop it. And right here in the bottom of the CSS, um, we're going to give the drop obviously a position absolute. Position absolute because again we want it to be a uh, position absolute. Uh, we're gonna give it a width and a height. Yeah, let's give it a width. Actually, you know we can actually pretty much copy uh, most of them uh, from uh, from the panel, uh, including the the rotate. I, I, I've already copied it. Let's yeah, see. yeah, that makes sense. Um, except for the width, the, the width needs to be 120 pixels. Uh, so now, actually, if we, instead of the background, let's make it uh, blue, blue, so we can see it. Uh, where is it? Yeah. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So this is the piece, uh, and obviously now uh, it's supposed to be invisible, or it can just be there. But now, uh, now it's to the animation needs to to drop. Let, let's leave it uh, blue for now, just so we can see it. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're gonna add an animation uh, drop. So, oops, <laughs> no, uh, it's, it's going to have the same duration, obviously, duration, it's going to have infinite like them all, and um, uh, I'm not sure about the timing function, let's leave the timing function again for, empty for now, uh, by the way, if you don't put any timing function, the default is is, yeah. um, and I, I normally don't, don't leave them empty, I leave them empty uh, for now. Uh, keyframes, keyframes. Uh, Copen really need to add keyframes to them. Yes. <laughs> uh, keyframes drop. So in the beginning, uh, at zero percent, uh, I want it to be uh, way, way down in in the bottom. So let's do another uh, translate uh, again. But I'm I'm trans translating the z axis. I want it to be on the bottom. Yep. So. Uh, so the, the, it's zero x zero y. We can actually play around with the x and y if we want to move it while it drops. But for now, uh, let's say uh, minus hundred vh. Okay. Uh, so now it's, it's all the way. Oops. Why is it? Oh, actually, I need I need the y. Excuse me, I need the y. Okay. So wh why do I need the y and not the z? Uh, because I'm using individual transform, and in the, when you're using individual transform, the translate happens before the rotate. Yes. So I'm I'm first translating on the y-axis and then rotating. Uh, if I'm if I would use regular transform, I could set my own order. Mm -hmm. uh, but in, in individual transform, the translate happens before the rotate. Yep. So yeah, you can you actually need to move it on the y-axis, um, and then. You need to move it down, so 100 VA. So now it's in the bottom, and it moves up. Um, but I, I, I need it. I, I want actually to be like at step ah, step end, um, because I want I want it to stay there, and I want it to to come back to place instantly at 55 percent. 55 percent is where the laser leaves the leaves the panel. Mm -hmm. So if I'm if I put this on zero, so now it's it's somewhere in the bottom, and the second the uh, with the second it moves, it jumps back to place. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what we need now is just to animate it back to one hundred percent back here. But obviously we don't want it to be step end. So the last thing we're going to add 
Uh, so you won't forget it. You can animate the timing function. Yeah, it's to, uh, definitely, it should stick now. <laughs> yeah, uh, and we're going to use is in because I wanted to start to to fall slowly. Uh, and if I haven't forget anything, uh, so now we can see the cut. We can see the panel here. Yes. Oh, oh, we need to change it to white. Uh, uh, <clears throat> yep, and it's supposed to be pretty seamless. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then yeah. the next one moves in. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. And this is how you do particle animations in CSS. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah. How and I will say, one for me, one of the things that really I liked there too, because whenever I have like multiple things that I'm trying to animate that are sort of should be linked together, but the timing, like really like the timing of the drop, let's say is a little bit different because it's only at that 55% really, but like I would just make the animation of the drop and then try and figure out the delay to get the timing of it to be proper here, not having to do that and just having everything on the same sort of scale, but just choosing, okay, it needs to happen at yeah, this percent of the main animation makes so much more sense. Cause you, you, you like, you need to like imagine a timeline, just like in a in a video editing software. If you ever work with one, mm -hmm. and it's like it's different channels of things starting and ending in different uh, the time, but the duration, the total duration, is still the same. Um, obviously, if you're working with uh, animations that have different duration, because sometimes you need to set the duration differently, and then syncing is a whole different problem. Yeah. 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 Um, that's it. I think. Uh, I hope you like it. I hope you learn a few nice new things. Um, working with random is really nice. There's so many things more that you can do with random, not just the angle and the color. Uh, the, the you know everything starting from the the size, the the where it's uh where it's hitting, uh like the 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 weight of so so we can actually like move things back down like like the fireworks, and there's a lot of things that you can add just by using random and obviously when you're using that many uh numbers of of elements you it's just make things easier. That was amazing. And I just want to say a very big thank you to Amit for showing us how we can do that. Now, if you'd like to see more of the crazy stuff he does, there is a link to his code pen that is just full of mind blowing, amazing things. And his Twitter account is there as well. If you want to follow along with the new stuff that he's constantly creating, but maybe you really enjoyed this video and you want to learn how to do more 3d CSS, amazing things. And this isn't the first time Amit has joined me. He has in the past where we looked at creating a spinning 3d cube with a ball bouncing on top of it. And if you'd like to see that, the video for it is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome TTLLD, Bailey, Andrew, James, Enrico, Michael, Simon, Tim, and Johnny, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.